which is sort of in the center, about 100 kilometers from Santiago. And my partner is from the Atacama Desert, which is a little oasis in the middle of the desert called San Pedro. And what's his name? His name is Rolando. Rolando. And he's indigenous? And he's Mikkel? indigenous from the Quince group. Quince? Quince. I think I'm um, there in here. There in here somewhere, yeah. yeah. And did he grow up in an indigenous culture? Was that how he was brought uh, up? Or was I he brought up in Spanish ways? In a mixed, mixed. In a mix sort of, oh. yeah. Is his name Spanish? Uh, his name is, oh, I think it is. Yeah. His brother is actually researching the whole um, indigenous line in San Pedro, and he set up this um, blog or like a website. It's called El Chilulo. El Chilulo. <laughs> El Chilulo. Oh, can you, is it yeah. in Spanish? Yeah. Uh, we oh, no, I think it might be, there might be some English into it because they're trying to get people to buy to, into right. it, yeah, to support it. It's, I'll send it to you. Yeah, send me the link. Send me the link. Yeah. Yeah. And he's still in Chile, is he? And he's still in Chile, yeah. And how much are your family here or in Chile? Your my family are here, aren't they? My brother is here, but most of my family and his, his all of his family is in Chile, and mine is only is everybody except my mum and wow. my brother. Yeah. And how does the Chilean people and the Chilean government treat the indigenous people of Chile? Look, I think. Um, I think it's been really um, um, harsh, but, mm. but you know, like the indigenous people are, are, have a, a great spirit of uh, of fight and survival, so they can't be kind of pushed aside. Mm. So there is over time, I think that um, the, the more there's more and more awareness about indigenous cultures, mm. which is great, and I think it's to the merit of the indigenous people that they don't let it let it erode. Yep. Yeah. So I went once to um, in nineteen ninety five I went to China and it was the the Fourth World Conference of Women. All right. And at that time the most important thing that I saw there is how indigenous people from around the world gathered together and how political and well organized they were. Yes. That was an, an amazing yeah. yep. just sort of uh, you know, just being able to be there and to see what, um, how well organised they were. Really what have the wars been like that? Recent? No, it's it's more recent. The there's a United Nations group of Indigenous peoples around the world, yeah. and Mick Dodson used to go to that all the time. And it's a global thing. It's probably been going for a few decades now. It's and and they recent. they meet annually. Yeah. And they, and they're very politi politically active. Very very. We've got some famous um, Indigenous activists. And no, not that not not that I know of, but I'm sure they are. I mean, uh, from uh, from Bolivia, you've got the president being indigenous. Is he? Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, yes. He, uh, him or her? Uh, him. What's his? Do you know the name? No, I just uh, That's all right. I'll look that, I'll look that up. At the moment, he's uh, indigenous. I, I didn't know that. Yeah. Indigenous. Right. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. And I take it that the recognition over the centuries of indigenous people in Chile is not what it is in Peru and Ecuador and other and the Amazonian bases basin, yeah. am I right? Look, I'm not the, sure. the further north you go, yeah. the more they've survived or the I might be wrong, but yeah. I think, Alondra's I think that there is more integration in Chile. Yeah, right. I think Bolivia probably there's a lot more in yep. cultures. And I think that there are pockets in, um, in the Amazonian bases that are completely Well integrated. they'd be pure. Yeah. But yeah. they wouldn't have been interbred. Yeah, that's right. Whereas in um in Uruguay, where Alondra is from, yeah. she says there's virtually no presence, no, no recognition, yeah. and that government's doing nothing. That's and I imagine true. Argentina is similar because yeah. they would have been heavily colonised by the Europeans. Absolutely, yeah. Same Australia, Southern Australia, almost think, wiped out. Obviously, in Peru, they've been able to sort of carve a bit of a, a tourist niche for themselves. Yeah. Like you just look at the yeah. Yeah. Picture, Yes, yeah. that's Peru, is it? Yeah. Do do you know Rosita, who used to work in? Yeah, um, I do. Yeah, she's Equ Ecuadorian, as you know. Yeah. Now she's got um, part Indigenous um, ancestry, but her partner yeah. is very heavily Indigenous, and her two boys have got more his bloodline. So oh, they're lovely. Oh, they very strongly look yeah. Indigenous looking. So she's coming up. She's down at um, Caval Avenue. She's working there, in fact. Uh -huh. So she's coming up to celebrate this map, as will Alondra. It's beautiful. I love it. I'm going to get one because Rolando would love it. Yes. Yeah. I'll send. Yeah. I, you don't have the link, have you? Uh, no, I don't. I'll send it to you. Yeah. It's um, the, 
be warned, the postage costs more than the map. Okay, that's fine. The map's $59 US, the postage is 87 <laughs> and, and they don't give you a cheaper option. But I thought it was it's worth, worth it. Having, yeah. yeah. It's interesting how our maps tell a story and how connected we are. It's a bit of pressure, but there's so yeah. much here that we can... Absolutely. And think about the other thing. That's the Pacific border around Chile, yeah. Peru. Yeah. So if we go down to Bondi and look across, I th we're looking somewhere at Chile. We are looking Be at Chile. Because the wine, I've checked this out, the wine districts in Chile are on the same latitude as the Hunter Wine so District. the wines are, are here in... Um, yeah, in yeah. That, 33. In yep. Well, yeah. that, that's about us. It's about here with this Lanzarena. Uh, but that's about level where we are yeah. in New South Wales. Yes. But the, the maps are actually correct. And yes, <laughs> yes. So that brings me to my proposition that if um, uh, Marina was here, she's Tongan and Maori, and she's, she um, paddles out rigged canoes, yeah. my proposition is that we get her to organise a traditional Polynesian <laughs> canoe and on the spring equinox, the four of us yeah. set sail for Chile. For Chile. And you're the Countess... The falconer. The falconer. <laughs> I'm the navigator, and um, and Marina will be our Polynesian go-between. Okay. And when we arrive in Chile, we'll set up a advocacy group along with the indigenous people to support their claim for rights. There you are. Absolutely, yeah, sounds like a, sounds like a plan. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the Polynesians were the world's first deep sea navigators, yeah. so we'll be yep. so we'll be our. Uh, in good hands with Marina. Because they would have come on, and landed on Easter Island. Yep. They inhabited the last uninhabited parts of the world, yeah. putting aside Antarctica, yeah. which really hasn't been yeah. inhabited. Yeah. So thank you, for Rosita, for, um, Raquel, Raquel, sorry. <laughs> and I spelt your name wrong in my text too, for coming to launch. Would you just like to close with something in Spanish? Um, que viva la gente indígena alrededor del mundo. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye for now bye. from Pet House Television. <laughs>